Hi there, everyone. This is uh, Robert with Reading Through History. I'm taking another shot at recording this video. It's been a disaster every time I've tried to do it. But in this episode, we're going to be looking at family fallout shelters during the Cold War. Now, all throughout the country, there were communities that were attempting to build these very large public fallout shelters like we discussed in the last video. These were structures that could hold thousands of people. But what if one of these shelters wasn't nearby? Or what if this shelter became too overcrowded by people freaking out over the commies trying to kill us? What if you and your family just couldn't stand being around people? What if your neighbor, Imogene, smelled too much like cats? What if Imogene had every intention of bringing these cats with her into the shelter? Were there any steps that you and your family could take in order to protect yourselves from this freaky nuclear fallout? Now, throughout the 1950s and 60s, many families started constructing their own personal fallout shelters right there in their very own backyard. Now, there were companies out there looking to capitalize on this public hysteria, and they marketed a variety of different family models to homeowners who wanted to protect themselves from a nuclear Armageddon. Now these private shelters ranged from a very cheap $13.50 foxhole kit all the way up to the very expensive $5,000 deluxe models. Now this deluxe model featured beds, a phone, a toilet, and even your own Geiger counter so that you could personally detect radiation levels. Now many families constructed their shelters in the middle of the night because they did not want their neighbors to know about this. They wanted to conceal the facility from the creepy cat lady next door because they feared that these neighbors who did not have shelters of their own would swarm over their property in the case of an emergency if they knew the shelter was there. You know, and if they got there inside, you know, they could eat your whole stockpile of Doritos. So many families who could not afford the fancy commercially produced shelters, you know, they had a number of do-it-yourself methods. So these survivalists, you know, they could undertake building their own shelter. And one popular method that was out there was to turn your already existing basement into a shelter by reinforcing it. And there were military surplus stores in larger cities out there selling air filters, flashlights, fallout protection suits, first aid kits, and these giant 17 and a half barrels of water for people to use you know, and supply and stockpile their own shelter. And these types of shelters were also much easier to conceal from the creepy neighbors. You know, because you could work down there in the day, people wouldn't even know it was there. Now, civil defense films created by the government encourage people you know, and the public to maintain a two-week supply of drinking water and non-perishable food right there inside their own basements. They also recommended having a battery-powered, radio-tuned, you know, turned into one of two civil defense Conrad stations. Now, these stations were 640 and 1240 on the AM dial. And this was, of course, long before, ironically, at least where I'm from, these stations now play oldies music. So now that the Russians are no longer this big threat of nuking us, these stations go back in time and they play music from the era when the threat of the commies nuking us was very real. Now how ironic is that? Now today, most family fallout shelters have been removed and or dismantled. But some might still be found in homes around America. However, most of the people living in these homes today with remnants of these one-time fallout shelters inside them, many of them have no idea what these basements were once used for. You know, because they've been converted back to that original state, you know, where Pete, this is the place today where people take that Chuck Norris total gym that they bought during some infomercial at three o'clock in the morning, you know, and they never intend to use it. So it's down there collecting dust. Now, nevertheless, some out there, you know, living in these places where these storage facilities were, you know, if they know what it was at one time, 
if some of that old stockpiled crackers and stuff in the, are still there, you know, this could be a living reminder of what it was like to actually live during the Cold War. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this content, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, folks, a video a day keeps that failing grade away. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed watching that old guy build his own personal fallout shelter. It amazes me that we used to have so many people who could do that, had the ability to do it, and knew how to do that. I would be clueless. Just if I lived through the Cold War, I would kind of be clueless. What to do? What a freak is. If you really want to know what it was like living in the Cold War, check out our historical fiction novel. Uh, it's the first in our historical fiction series of many that we hope to get out there. But we need awareness. We need people knowing about it. We need people checking this book out. Uh, YouTube's been killing us here lately. I mean, almost half our videos now no longer have monetization on them because controversial topics. It's dealing with the war and that might hurt someone's feelings. So we're, we're down you know, over half the money we used to. Be. Not that we were making a lot on here, but it was nice to have something. So a great way to support our channel now is to check out this book, buy this book, read this book, and review it on Amazon. What would it have been like living during the Cold War? Say you're in junior high and you realize, you see Kennedy on the news saying, hey, they're putting missiles in Cuba and pointing them at us. The country's going to freak. That's what this book's all about. That's the historical backdrop. Check it out. We want to do more historical fiction novels and we need people to know they're out there. Also, teachers, if you're interested, we got a Cold War workbook. I've been doing it in class with my students, and I even get them coming, hey, are we doing another one of those? I like them. They're kind of interesting. Nice, short, concise, you know, goes in depth without overwhelming them. Great resource materials, so check those out, please. Please, please. We need people to know this exists. We need people reading this book. There's just so much on Amazon, people have a hard time finding it, so I'm putting the link down below. Check it out. And until next time, I'm Robert with Reading Through History.